Hi everybody, the next step is going to be to talk about increasing and decreasing sets or systems of sets or events if you wish and how measures behave on the limit of these uh, increasing or decreasing uh, events or sets. Uh, I'm not going to prove the theorem which I'm about to show you because it's done again in further topics in probability so I'm just mentioning the theorem and it's going to be important for us but the proof is to be found in my other unit, further topics in probability. So we still have our sample space omega, and we're looking at the power set. And so A1, A2, and so on, uh, being in the power set, of course later on it's going to be an algebra or a sigma algebra, but for now let me just uh, use the power set. So in other words, subsets of omega, nothing very fancy, is increasing, so this is a definition, let me put here definition, this is increasing if the following is true, for every n, a n is a subset of a n plus 1, okay, so we have a 1 here, a2 includes A1, A3 includes A2, and so on and so on. You get an increasing uh, set, an increasing system or increasing sequence of these subsets, all of which are in the sample space omega. Okay, that's an increasing set. And then in a similar way, A1, A2, and so on and so on, again just subsets of omega or in the power set if you wish, are or this sequence is decreasing if for every n a n contains a n plus one. Okay? So the picture is something like this. You have the big set omega. And then A1 contains A2, so this is A2, which contains A3, which contains A4, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, it's clear that these sets are getting smaller and smaller, while in the increasing case they are getting larger and larger, and so this is the definition of increasing or decreasing sets. And with that, now I can state a theorem which uh, tells, something, tells us something about the limits of these sets. But before that, let me actually define what the limits are. So if I look at the first set in the increasing case, that's A1. If I look at the second set, that's A2. The third set is A3 and so on and so on. It's a little bit hard to talk about these events themselves or these sets themselves, A1, A2, A3. Another way of talking about them is if I take the union of the sets. If I take the union of A1 and A2, because A2 contains A1, it's just A2. If I take the union of A1, A2, A3, because A3 contains all of them, it's just A3, and so on and so on. And so it's quite natural to look at the infinite union of these guys, which is in some sense the larger of these. But of course that doesn't make really sense. But the infinite union is just really how far this whole thing grows. It could be finite, so it, or, or well, not finite, but it could be just less than the full of omega. Maybe, maybe it never grows out of this orange circle. Maybe that's the infinite union, okay? Or maybe it grows up to omega, it could be omega as well. But in any case, this infinite union is sometimes called the limit of the increasing sequence. Not all people like this notation, but uh, in an increasing uh, sequence of, of events, it makes sense to talk about the limit. And it's kind of meaningful because uh, a point is going to be in that limit if this point is swallowed at some point. In other words, if there is an A, which contains that point, in other words, if it's in the union of all the ANs. Okay, so that's that kind of a meaningful definition of a limit. In a similar way, if I look at the decreasing sequence, then it's getting smaller and smaller, and 
which are the points which I would call to be in the limit of these sets? Well, if these sets shrink to the empty set, then of course the limit is empty, so there is no point in there, but it could be that it never shrinks actually smaller than something in here. It could be that they are all decreasing, but in the limit, kind of a limit, it's never it never shrinks smaller than some limiting set. And how do I find this limiting set? Well, this limiting set is going to be in the intersection of all of them. Okay, the intersection of A1 and A2 is A2 because A2 is smaller. The intersection of A1, A2, A3 is A3 because that's the smallest. And somehow if I take the, all of the, the intersection of all of them, that kind of tells me how much this whole system shrinks. And in the case of a decreasing system, then some people define this as the limit of the AN. Some other people would say that it's nonsense. I mean, sets non don't have limit. But some people will use this as the limit of a decreasing sequence or the union as the limit of an increasing sequence. Okay? So that's the definition of increasing and decreasing uh, sequences of subsets and their limits. And now here is a theorem which essentially states that limits behave nicely with measures. So these kind of limits behave nicely with measures. Again, it's a theorem I'm not proving here because I didn't do that in uh, further topics in probability. And of course, if you go to measure theory, I'm pretty sure they show this there too. So let P be a finitely additive measure on an algebra algebra A. Okay? So that's, that's the starting point. In other words, I have an algebra, so I can take finite unions. If I take infinite unions, I'm not sure that they still belong to my algebra, so they might or might not. And when I take finite disjoint unions, then the this measure uh, of the unions is going to be the sum of the measure, the finite sum of the of the individual measures. If I have an infinite uh, disjoint union and it happens to belong to the algebra, I'm not sure that the measure of that infinite union is the infinite sum of the measures. As seen in the previous video, it's only a finite additive measure, so I'm, I'm not certain that it works for infinite unions. That's the starting setup. Okay? I'm also assuming, <coughs> assume also, that it's a probability measure. So the largest set, which is omega, has measure one, so it's a probability measure. The statement of the theorem is that the following are equivalent. So I'm going to have four statements here, and they are all equivalent. Okay, so what are these four statements? Statement one is that P is actually a measure and then it must be a probability measure. P is a measure. Okay, so if you if you watch carefully the previous video, then you know what actually the content of this statement one is. Namely, I just assumed P to be a finite additive measure. Statement one is that it's actually a measure. So if I take an infinite, countably infinite disjoint union, then the measure of that is going to be the sum of the individual measures of the sets. So not only finite, the, uh, finite unions behave nicely under P, but also infinite unions. Okay, So that's statement one. Equivalent to this is statement two. Namely, if A n is a sequence of uh, sets in uh, subsets of omega, and it's, a it's an increasing system, so remember, increasing meant that it's getting larger and larger, okay? And it has a, a limit if it's increasing. So if we have an increasing uh, system, an increasing si uh, uh, sequence of subsets, and, and the union happens to be in the algebra A, for example, because A happens to be a sigma algebra, and then every union must belong to the sigma algebra as well, 
or for any other reason, then, then if I look at the measures of my sets, it's not hard to see that they are going to be non-decreasing and therefore they will have a limit as numbers. This limit, the limit of these numbers is going to be the probability or the measure or, or additive measure of the union of the ANs and recall that this is what we exactly called the limit of the ANs. So this is a theorem about swapping the limit of probabilities with the uh, swapping the limit and probability, right? So the limit of probabilities is going to be the probability of the limits where the limit of the set is meaningful in the sense that it's the union for an increasing sequence of, of, of sets or sequence of events. Okay, so that these two are equivalent and it's further equivalent to number three, which is the exact same statement for decreasing events. If a n is decreasing and the intersection, the limit, if you want, happens to be in the algebra, which is not clear because it's only an algebra and this is an infinite uh, intersection. But if A happens to be a sigma algebra, then this is necessarily true. Then, again, the limit swaps with the probability. So take limit of the probabilities. It is going to be the probability of the limit. What is the limit of decreasing sets is the intersection. So again, recall that the infinite intersection was what we called the limit of the decreasing sequence. Of sets. Okay, so that's number three, and number four is again a very similar statement. If a n is decreasing to zero, that's number four to zero. So the limit of the a n's happens to be the empty set. Okay, if a n is decreasing to the empty set. So this is two statements. First of all, it's decreasing, and second, the limit if the, is the empty set, so it shrinks down to the empty set. Okay. Then, <coughs> well, guess what? The pro limit of the probabilities, as n goes to infinity, <coughs> is again the probability of the limit, but the limit is the empty set, and it's very easy to find out from the axioms or the definitions of, of a measure or, or just a finite additive measure that the probability of the empty set must be zero. So the statement now is that the limit of the probabilities is actually equal to zero. Okay, so this is the theorem, the continuity of measures if you want. Let me just add this comment here. This is referred to as continuity of measures. Essentially, it's a statement that saying that being a measure is equivalent to being able to swap limits with the measure or limits with probability. Okay, so a probability measure is a measure because it swaps with limits for increasing or decreasing events. And so, so one is equivalent to two, equivalent to three, equivalent to four. <coughs> Why is it called continu continuity of measures? Well, if you learned a little bit of analysis, then you probably remember that continuous functions swap with limits. And here what we're talking about is that measures also swap with limits. 